uh, February 23, 2023. I have a time of 7.02 p.m. Um, call the, uh, the meeting of the Conservation Commission for the Town of Deerfield to order. Um, this is being done uh, by remote on Zoom. And to say that meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A section 20 until March 31, 2023. Uh, meetings are typically broadcast broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television. Uh, the remote meeting connections um, are noted on our agenda and they are on the town's website. And we do ask that uh, meeting attendees uh, please mute themselves um, unless asking a question or commenting. And all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. So those are kind of the general rules of the meeting uh, so we'll call that to order so the meeting guidelines for the town of deerfield um, general guidelines are uh, to speak one at a time uh, follow the deerfield code of conduct which is to be respectful considerate courteous concise and non-repetitive um, for the conservation commission we also ask that you please address the chair to be recognized to speak and unless you're presenting uh, please keep your comments to that two to three minute time frame or less if you can, um, um, and you know, keep it um, concise and courteous and respectful as we go forward. Um, so with that, I'll do a roll call of the members of the uh, Conservation Commission, uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin here. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby here. Ben Byrne. I do not see Ben, uh, Pete Law present. So we have a quorum of three out of the out of the four of us. I'm still looking for that fifth member. So whoever wants to raise their hand, we still got one other spot. Um, great. Okay. Well, the first order of business tonight uh, is to look at the minutes. Uh, Amy, you had uh, on the agenda a minutes from eleven twenty two twenty two. Yeah, and, and, and if I had been paying a, attention this morning, I would have included them in your packet. I apologize. I'll put them on for next uh, next meeting. I spaced out. Okay, so those are still outstanding? Yeah. I didn't look back. Okay. Uh, have we received those? Do we know? I, I guess we have if you're going to um, add them to the... So. Yeah, I think I did them. Yeah, yeah I, I believe I have them. They just somehow never got uh, officially approved. So I will keep those on the agenda for next meeting and I apologize. Okay. Um, well, great. For some reason we didn't, uh, I didn't look back at my earlier notes from the previous meetings, but apparently that's still uh, outstanding. Uh, but we do have the minutes that were submitted for the January 26, 23, um, meeting. Uh, members presence were Pete Lockett, Devlin, Sean Libby. Um, I presume you've all received those, had a chance to review. Yep. Any questions, any concerns, any revisions needed? Or I would take a motion to uh, accept as is. I've read through them. and I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes of the January meeting as written. Okay, motion on the table. We got a second. So the motion on the table to accept the minutes of 126 23 meeting um, as written. Any further comment from the commissioners? No, we'll take a roll call to vote to accept. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. So the motion's passed, and Amy, we can. Put those uh, minutes into the to the record as uh, approved. Great. So that's kind of the uh, boilerplate stuff we needed to uh, get through to start off. And um, we have a few things on the agenda tonight. Um, three areas of new business, one continuation of some discussion on old business, uh, a couple of things for general discussion I want to bring up with the commissioners. And then we, we did have a 
a slew of mail um, that came in that we'll review. Uh, there was at least one item on an unanticipated in the last 48 hours that I'll bring up to the commissioners that we can talk through uh, briefly. Uh, but let's jump right into the new business. The first item uh, on the agenda is uh, tree clearing activities at zero Clark Cross Road, map 113, lot eight. Um, this property is owned by, if I, I believe I wrote this right, SDS Properties. Uh, Mr. Avery, Tom Avery is um, with us tonight. I see him on the call representing STS. If I have that right, Tom, STS? Yes, yes, yeah, you do, Peter. Got that down, okay, good. Um, so this is brought to our attention. Um, several weeks ago um, from the state service forester, Allison Wright Hunter, uh, notified the commissioner and uh, the commission. And this is all in a packet. I can uh, show you, to, um, but notified the commission of the har harvesting activities at uh, zero Clark Cross Road. Um, she noted there was not a permit by the state to a forest cutting plan uh, the alternative would have been a file of notice of intent through the Conservation Commission. We had not received that. Um, Ms. Wright Hunter had noted that work may have occurred within a, a probable resource area, uh, shared some, some concerns with the commissioner on that. Uh, one of our commissioners, uh, Sean Libby, who's present tonight, uh, sent a letter out on February 13th uh two sts properties uh, attention tom avery um just stating the background of the information we got from from the state forester and outlining our goal uh, for inviting you here tonight uh, for this meeting uh determine the intent behind the harvesting and to help you devise plans for installing erosion control measures to prevent any mis and any sedimentation of nearby resources um if I look at the state, the mass GIS maps, uh, there is um, a wetlands area just, I think, right on the western border um, of that property. I have it here someplace. Um, so there may be some bordering um, wetland vegetation in the area. And it looks like there may be a swale from some of the photos that uh, she submitted to us. Um, I know she. Uh, visited you at um, maybe on, if not, I don't think Sunday, maybe the 3rd of February, um, and took some pictures and some GPS and such. So that's kind of the, the background um, for Tom. Um, Sean is kind of, uh, has been involved, I've been out for the last couple of weeks. Um, we also reached out to DEP, uh, Mark, Stinson, who's with us tonight as well, to review some of the areas. But um, John, Kate, do you want to add anything before we uh, hear from Mr. Avery? Just no. want to understand, you know, what what the intent is behind it, and um, you know, work on any plans to control any erosion issues. Yeah. And, and I guess one of the, some of the questions that were brought up is, you know, was this commercial activity? Was this agriculture activity? Was it some other activity? Um, there seems to have been no forestry plan. So what's the intent? And then if we can work to see um, as we come into the springtime, especially with the rains and the, the runoffs and so forth, um, if we can uh, perhaps get a site access to, to look at the area to review and, and determine what stabilization uh, practices may be put in place there to help out there and um, and just seeing how we can work together on this one. This one kind of came out at us, uh, came to us. And um, so we're just trying to catch up a little bit. So Mr. Avery, if you can kind of give us your background, that would be helpful and we can go from there. Um, I have a change of use uh, for the, the land. I didn't realize that I you know, needed to do some things, but uh, to change it to agriculture. It's a, a flat field, putting it back into what I was told uh, originally it was uh, when I purchased the house. It came with the, the house in front. Uh, 
that's how I acquired the property. So um, just changing it to agriculture. You mean you're converting the use from a forested site to um, a different agricultural product, like into hay field or pasture, or you're planning on stumping and and doing some crops, or it's it's a very uh, flat level uh, piece of land that I cut the trees on. the uh, The slopes were not uh, touched. So are you converting the forested parcel, it was forested originally, back to an agricultural use? Or yes, are you that's planning correct. it to grow? So with I believe it's within a year you need to make forward progress on, you know, moving towards agriculture. So are you are you stumping this and what what are your plans? Uh, I do plan to stump it, but uh, this winter has been a very wet winter, so um, uh, we'll wait until uh, things dry up a little bit. I'm still trying to understand uh, maybe what what crop you're intending to grow. Uh, turned it into a hay field for, for now, uh, for lack of uh, knowing exactly, uh, you know, what I'm going to do. Putting into uh, the best use that I, I feel for the property. So is that fall under the 310 CMR 10.04 agriculture B15, the agriculture exemption for homeowners, or is this a different agricultural exemption and above? And John or, or Mark, you're much more versed than I am on those uh, forestry regs. This is beyond forestry regs. It's a conversion of forest land back to agriculture. So it's sort of out of my area of expertise, but. Right, so under agriculture B-15, if I may, you're actually limited to, I mean, the photos that Allison took showed basically clear cut. And a clear cut is not part of the wetlands protection regulations Agricultural, agricultural exemption for homeowners. It's limited to 5,000 board feet or 10 cords of wood. Uh, it's the must be evenly distributed after the cut and the crown cover shall not be less than 50%. So clearly a clear cut wouldn't qualify for that owner's exemption for owners using the wood for their own use. So typically it means firewood or something else that the homeowner would use the wood for. Yeah, this is in this case, the Mr. Avery is looking to turn the forest land into hay field. Um, are there- There's no exemption there, for that. There's no exemption for that. So, what should a R should a RDA should been filed or a notice of intent filed? I mean, how do we make this so that it's correct moving forward? Well, it is as I talked to Pete about, you know, and Allison made the recommendation. I think you did too. You know, first thing is make sure that no sediment ends up in the wetlands down the slope there. I mean, it, potentially it could have been permittable under a request for determination. I mean, uh, unless, I mean, if the work in the buffer does not alter the resource area, then an RDA is very appropriate. I mean, whether or not you want to do one now, that's up to you guys, or is it strictly, you know, get the wetland delineated 
get some erosion controls up and go from there. You know, decide how you want to proceed from there. Would it have been permittable? Possibly, you know, it would have been permittable probably under a notice of intent, potentially an RDA, but you know, I haven't been to the site. I have no idea except from the pictures what's there. My understanding is the cleared area, the agri the part that would be converted to agriculture in the near future uh, is in upland. Um, there's a fringe of wetland area to the west, um, but the harvest didn't come within 100 feet of that. Um, and that would be that western boundary line of Mr. Avery's. Uh, so, you know, in talking with Allison, it sounded like the upland portion, be it for forestry purposes, it would have been required in both cases, either conversion to hayfield or whatever use, uh, or for forestry use. Um, it's the access um, issue that comes in along the resource area. Um, and it's really the access road from um, the truck access road up into the property where there's a, a significant slope that Allison had a concern for erosion. I think that's probably the commission's primary um, concern is just how do we stabilize that um, uh, access road down from the upland area um, because it, it appears to like go right, not, it's within the resource area and, and it would, it could potentially flow downhill into that swale. Um, so there's hay waddles, uh, in place already. And, uh, I put some, a uh, drain and a uh, drainage ditch in to divert the water away from that, uh, into another low area. Uh, you know, when I started it, I was hoping, uh, the ground would be frozen, but. Uh, we all know what happened with the weather. So, if one more comment. Uh, you live at uh, uh, what, two two ninety nine Greenfield Road. Uh, I do Green? not. Oh, okay. I just see that's owned by STS Properties. Two ninety nine. Uh, they, they haven't. They haven't, excuse me, they haven't caught up with it. Uh, that property was sold back in uh, February of last year. Oh, okay. So yeah. SCS previously owned it, Mark, and then they, they sold it off. All right, and then there's a, looks like a 50 foot right of way or something behind that, between that address and uh, where the cutting took place, owned by a, uh, Gregory Gardner and shows what could be an intermittent stream there. So I don't know where well, the access road is from Greenfield Road. That's all. Well, that is the reason. That, okay. that uh, information has not been updated. That strip of land is now owned by SDS properties. Oh, okay. So Thank they, you. uh, Mark Beckin, it was dated uh, February 7, 2022, signed off for a, uh, an AR, an ANR application for that transfer. Um, I don't have the final, the application was final. I never, I never found that there was completed by the planning board, uh, but it was listed that that um, uh, partially portion of the uh, uh, owned by Greg Gardner to be conveyed to SDS Properties LLC. So yeah, I think like that went over. That. Yeah, looks like before that it was landlocked. Yeah, and I think on that eastern side, right where that uh, that property is, that fifty foot swath there, there is what is probably an intermittent stream that goes down through that area, and. I guess one of the questions I have, we we have visuals from Allison, but we don't have a, any really updated delineation up there. We have the map that shows the wetlands on the Western side, um, but um, coming across that old, um, 
what's that road? Clark Cross Road. Um, uh, yeah, that that it, it swoops around that same property and comes right down through from where that area is. So um, that's where you want to keep the material out of that swale. Um, but if there's additional activities in there, um, we may need further delineation of just what it comes down to that, that swale and into that, that property. And that's probably what we would have asked for if we had an RDA or an NLI. Are you, you, could, you could just go right with, you know, getting a delineation and if nothing happened within the buffer, at least he knows what areas to stay out of or where he needs to come back to the commission on permitting. I mean, that's one option. Uh, could I uh, kind of give you a little uh, idea of what it is there? The right of way was for a railroad. So there's an existing railroad bed. The railroad is uh, railroad bed is probably 20 feet uh, above that stream, the, the intermittent stream that you're, um, you're speaking of. It, uh, there's a, you know, there's slopes on either side. Yeah, it runs all the way up to that, just on the uh, west side of five and 10, the railroad tracks and cuts over a little bit further up from your property. Properties up in that area, comes back across. But yeah, that was the old area. But there is still that stream that comes down through that area. Um, when Alice so was there, she I'm sorry. Um, she mentioned the stream crossing and the uh, there's a stone culvert there that the railroad put in, and at that point, it's about 30 feet below the road. Yeah, that probably would have been done quite some time ago. Yeah, um, I'm not sure yes, how long, yeah. how long the, uh, I think it's a, it's still a town road that goes out through there. It's not a maintained town road. Uh, I'm trying to find out from the, um, the DPW guy just what the status is. But um, so we could look at trying to do a delineation now to find out what we got. That would actually help us with determining what um, erosion control measures that we may want to take a look at uh, implementing there because we would know what we were dealing with in that in that location from from both sides now that you own the, the existing the the previous lot plus now the that the uh, the strip in front um, It might also help to know if there's future work planned on that parcel. Yeah, we would need the, the delineation done if there, you know, if you if you did decide to move off of something other than the agricultural to something else, you know, you'd have to come in front of the various boards to look at that. We'd have to have it done anyway. So if you do a delineation now, uh, that would hold for the next three year period um, on that. So that would be possibility as well. I'm just looking for something else. I can't find what I was looking for. Um, it says property is okay. That was the sign off on that. Let's see. Um, yeah, because we don't have a good understanding of where the where the bordering vegetation may be as well. And you mentioned you had put some, I think some hay waddles in. You said hay, hay bales. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. No, the, the, the waddles. Uh, the, the purchase waddles, straw waddles, or just hay bales? Yes, yes, straw, purchase straw okay. waddles. Or okay. Eight inch, so. Yeah, because, um, as we get into it, you know, those types of details and within the town of Deerfield, we can't use, we don't 
approve the hay, hay bales and, and different things, specific ways to put them in and how they have to be structured and how they have to be overlapped and staked and, and whatnot. So those are things that we'd have to take a look at. Um, now, if we did a, a delineation, um, we can provide, we have consultants that work for us in the town. Uh, we can go out to request a um, proposal, the you know, RFP for the proposal. Um, you would have to pick up the cost of that, um, but then that would be something that we would have a delineation done on that site. Um, but either way, we, we're going to, we would like Mr. Avery, you know, permission to come out and have a site visit, get a little better handle on it, see what we're looking at. But I think the delineation may be very useful to both the commission, to the town and yourself of knowing really what's out there, what can or can't be done going forward. Kate, yeah, uh, Sean, any other comments from the commissioners? Thoughts? Um, if Mr. Avery was able to clearly delineate the extent of work um, in some areas, it might alleviate uh, delineation on both sides. Uh, like say his, if his hayfield wasn't extending any further west and it was very apparent that the wetlands were, you know, several hundred feet away, uh, is if that's something we could determine on, on a site meeting, I don't know. Um, but I was just thinking yeah. um, in that case, yeah. you know, like if, if the work area was delineated, then we could stipulate where the wetland delineation is. Yeah, we'd probably have to, we have to know exactly where the work area is within that lot. So we're going to have to get the, yeah. you know, the locations, the, the Latin the longitudes and, and get a GPS and get it surveyed, sure. knowing just what we got, knowing where you're at now compared to the, the entire parcel see what's left over and then we can start looking at distances and and so forth that would be helpful do you have it have you had a survey i have now if you were to go have a site meeting there this would alleviate a lot of your concerns uh, the logging didn't take place right to the edge of the slopes um, and and the property line is at the toe of the slope. And these slopes are uh, maybe 40 feet down. So the, the wetlands is, uh, will not be impacted. Uh, it's not like you could drive over to them, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, would, would there be certain feet from any bordering um wetland vegetation would be certain a number of feet from you know intermittent streams and so forth that we'd have to take a look at um yeah could we get a would you be willing to get us a, a kind of an updated survey of what the site looks like today you know the overall area get the get the you know the longitude latitude of all the points the gps points around the area um we should be able i I think for the town maps, we should have all the all the numbers from the from the edges, but then we can see where the where the work was done uh, to date. Now, kind of give us a a start with, and then we could, um, if we had that information, then do a site visit in the next few weeks. Um, would that be a start? And then, if we have some further questions, just to let you know, the second you know, option or the second thing that we'd probably look for if there were still some questions on that. Okay, we got to do a more uh, detailed delineation there with a wetland specialist and see where we're at. But that could give you a stepped up approach. It would give us some uh, ideas of what's getting in there. And yeah, the way, yeah, it's, it's cold over the weekend here, but um, been a warm winter and spring comes early. We're going to have some water coming down through there before we know it. So we'd like to get after this in the next couple of weeks and take a look at it and then see if we need the next steps to uh, do any further delineation in the area. Okay. Does that sound good to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, can you supply us with who you're gonna have, your surveyor and, and that time framing and when you would have that done? 
I will take the uh, what I've already had surveyed, and I will mark out uh, on it where where it is. But uh, can you throw GPS points on it, or I mean, we're going to have to have those verified probably by a survey on the GPS and where the, the specific locations are. Is that what we're going to need, Sean, from your standpoint? A handheld GPS unit will give you, you know, pretty much no closer than 10 to 15 feet. Yeah. If he's got a handheld unit and he can get you a whole bunch of points along the cutting, the edge of the cutting, I can plot, plot them on a map and send it to you. It's not a problem. It won't take me long. I think that would rough out the back end if there was a concern. You know, I was mostly thinking in terms of uh, cost savings for a full wetland delineation um, all the way around the property that um, if he can GPS the extent of, of the work that's been done, then we can verify distances really both directions. But if it was like he's saying, you know, or if we can even get on site, um, you know, if it's very apparent, then I would probably only be concerned about uh, delineating the areas that he's already worked in. But that's, I haven't nearly the experience that others do on the board, so. Well, that's kind of what I'm trying to help out here with maybe a step approach. Um, let's get the, uh, in the the survey part of it done get the the points in the, the lat longitude and that give us a little better handle of because uh, we can't go on the property we only see it from five and ten it's kind of you know it's hard to see out there and get the aerials but well, it's hard to put everything together so how about we go out and have a site meeting um, and uh, we'll look at it and then if you need it i'll i'll do it but uh, i'm not interested in, in getting a surveyor to come in and spend more money for something that's easily you can you can look at. Sean, Kate, your thoughts on that? I'm fine starting with an initial site meeting. You know, if we can, I the primary concern to me is mostly that the uh, access road that does go above you know that hits that railroad bed doesn't you know run with uh you know unstable soil right straight down 20 feet further and into the swale and um that's mostly what i want to protect here and get an understanding of where he wants where the work is going to be done for this uh hayfield and okay well we can um uh, anything further, uh, Mr. Avery? Uh, no. Anything further from anybody else on the call? So we can, oops. Uh, Amy has yeah. her hand up, it looks like. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention, so I do have um, a site visit permission slip that I can send to Mr. Avery that will document that we have permission. And um, I think if more than one of you is going, I will need to schedule that as a meeting. So I'll just need 48 hours uh, posting notice. Um, okay. So All right. We'll just, when, when you schedule, just like I said, make sure you, you have, uh, I, I get 48 hours notice to post it. Okay. So you can send out that application to Mr. Avery tomorrow or yep. whenever. Yep. Okay. So you get that coming. Um, we'll try to set up some for next week and we'll we'll have to close this out as a new business. Um, with a motion to to move ahead that we decide that we'll start out with the initial uh, thought of a site visit to get a better understanding of the location um, and move forward with that. Um, so hopefully we can get that done next week. Uh, just knowing that we will go out to the site visit, depending on what we find, it may lead to additional steps we may need um, more plans more detailed plans whether it's surveyed it may lead to uh wetlands delineation it may lead to some other things but we want to get this started step through it um and try to do it as efficiently as possible um 
we'll probably have you know we'll comment on the erosion controls that you've put in place that's great they're already there um to see if they're if we have to do anything different but um i just want to make it clear that we'll start with a site visit we'll have a you guys can do a motion for that we can go ahead and but there may be additional steps after there that the uh, commission's um holds available to to move forward with uh if we need to once we see the area that work for everybody okay well if you guys can make a motion to close this one out with just a site visit to uh, do the uh, initial review then that works for me okay you want to try, Sean, and I'll type what you're saying? Uh, you can try. Um, <laughs> I move that we move forward with a site visit at Zero Clark Crossroad in the near future um, to review the tree clearing. Do we need to add anything else to that motion? You know, the site visit um, as the start of reviewing yeah, the tree I may just say, Yeah, I, if you just pull that one off, I would just say, maybe do another one and say, you know, just to uh, do an initial site visit uh, to determine if any additional um, items are required or whatever, something like that, just to leave it open so it's clear to everybody. Okay. Rescind my initial motion. Uh, I move uh, that we have uh, an initial site visit on Zero Clark Cross Road uh, to determine if any additional requirements will be necessary from the Conservation Commission um, regarding the harvesting activities and future activities uh, on the property. Okay, motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, any additional comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, seeing none, take a roll call vote for accepting the motion on the table. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. Uh, motion passes three to zero. Oh. Uh, Mr. Avery, you'll get a um, application from uh, our assistant town administrator, Amy. Um, get that back into us and I'm sure one or all of us can figure out something next week to to get some time together so we can get this moving along if that if that works for you that works for us that works for me thank you all right let's start thank you thanks for your time all right second one these are more informative as i find out more the next two items of new business i don't think we really have to do Amy, you can tell me if I have to open and close them out or not, but um, there was one that was brought to our attention. Um, and I can show this screen. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, you guys got in your packet. I don't know if, if anybody else wants to see the email, but we received a um, an email from a uh, an adjacent property um, owner um relative to 72 mill village uh road gilmore property um bringing up the issue that uh, uh in the words of the of this person not, it's not only becoming a uh, eyesore but a dump uh numerous unregistered cars uh just a dump there construction yard debris etc cetera, etc cetera. it's been going on for years um citizen asked us to um asked us and various other peoples in the town to take a look at it. Um, we asked uh, Mark Simpson from DEP to uh, his comments as well. So Mark, feel free on this one. Um, Amy, correct me if I'm right. I've been gone the last two weeks. I've been catching up on emails here. Yep. But it seems like this one um, has been taken over. We had a um, another review by the Board of Health. And this one will be uh, worked at uh, initially by the Board of Health and bring in other um, town departments as needed. Is, did I get that one right, Amy? Uh, yeah, I, I think what happened is in the, the same, uh, there was the same complaint in 2017 and it was handled by the Board of Health, which se seems, 
a little odd. I mean, they had there was septic involved, so I, I get that. Um, I think Tim Hilchey has concerns about wetlands being filled in. I, I know someone uh, communicated that to me. Um, I couldn't find it in the email, but that's uh, I guess there's a bordering wetland behind the property. So and I look at the map and, and and Mark, you can correct me, but I, I looked at the map and it looked like a um either a, a swampy wetland or deciduous or or both in that area, um just to the east of the property, east south, yeah. um before you hit that cornfield area. Yeah, it's actually bigger than the GIS shows. Okay. So I found, uh, sent it to Amy, Peter, uh, an email I found from 2017 from Charlie Kanicki. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I ever heard the results of what happened. So I don't know if it was ever actually discovered that there was actually any wetland alteration wetland fill. I have no idea. Yeah. Before my time, um, in looking at it, and Amy, I don't know if you were able to find anything else in the files, but it, I'm not sure if it was ever brought any further to the Conservation Commission or yeah, if there was I anything what, done. Yeah, what um, Dick, who is, you know, the, the uh, he, he's our history here. Um, I don't think anything was done by the CONCOM in the past, and I did look through the files. I didn't find anything. Um, but as I said, I think Tim Hilchey has concerns. Um, so I don't know if you want to investigate the uh, Bob Walden. And I think Dick also looked at the property now. It's, it's not nearly the same. The violations aren't nearly what they were the last time. It's basically they've got more unregistered cars on the property than they're supposed to. Um, but as I said, I don't know if you want to talk to Tim about his concerns uh, for wetlands. Yeah, um, I have talked to Tim in the past on that. Um, now, I think Dick was going to send a, a new email on his findings. I did not see that this afternoon. Did he send that no, out? He, no, he didn't send anything. I, um, okay. I meant to catch him before he left, and he didn't. So. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, he, he. Yeah, he did um, email me about Atlas Farm. That's the next issue, so we can talk about yeah. that. But, uh, nothing on Seventy Two Mill Village. Okay, so I think I need to wait to see what his report is on that site, um, and if he does show some activity, you know, if he does indicate that there's storage or uh, there's also some. Um, I believe it's still there. Some, um, you know, fairly good size uh, stockpiles of gravel and and dirt, and I'm not sure what the composition is on that. But on that south uh, eastern corner of the property, which is pretty close to the wetlands, I would say. Um, so we may have to get involved from the conservation commission uh, standpoint as well. Um, but I wanted to see what the, the Board of Health reported first as a stepping, as a start, was, since I wasn't here. And, and Mark, it doesn't seem like we were involved earlier or closed out. So we may have to, from the CONCOM side of things, start kind of initially, if you will, <laughs> um, here in 2023. And Mark, as you look at the maps, do you have any, can you tell what the um, distances may be from the road over to the wetland, to the parcel to the wetland area? Yeah. It's not that big of a site, you know, property, I don't think. I don't think it goes that deep. A couple hundred feet in, okay. it could start, you know, about 200 feet or so. Uh, but you do have hydric soils on most of that property. So I think you really need a good delineation done to, to tell because the wetlands could be even closer than 200 feet. I just, yeah, because I'm looking at color infrared. 
it kind of pulls out hydric soils. I mean, Sean, Sean's done the same thing probably. He knows. I'm it just looks, catching up. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks wet between the GIS wetlands and the road. Can you but share the map? Wet, I can't tell. Would Pardon? it be possible for you to share your screen so that we can all see the map? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where's the share screen? Yeah, when you said 200, I, I thought it'd be just driving by it enough going to the transfer station there. Um, yeah. I thought it'd be closer, uh, less of a, a spot. Okay. To all that right. green line measures almost 300 feet. Yeah. But then, but to, that, yeah, you see in here, it's almost as dark. Yeah. As so this is 2005. This is uh, 2011. It looked pretty neat. Then you come up here to 2021, and you can mm. see there might have been, you know, he's done some work in here, but I really can't see anything yeah. in here. And that looks like water, which makes me think the wetlands are further along this line in here somewhere. See, yeah, that's like the same color. There's definitely standing water in there at certain times of the year. I, I've definitely seen that. Yeah, so I come up with, uh, yeah. you know, maybe 170 feet or so. But I don't see any, again, I don't see anything happening in this area. Yeah. You can't see through the trees, so. Yeah. The only thing that's going to help you is a, is a good site visit. Yeah. It it doesn't appear like they're stockpiling dead cars there. Is that what the complaint is? That I mean, uh, it's always been, you know, um, had construction equipment there. I assume he works for a contractor. Uh, he's got, you know, a big heavy truck. Um so yeah. I kind of thought he always stored like he he's had a bobcat with its top open for like a year <laughs> uh, in the back. Um, so it's not doing a lot of work. Yeah, I don't see a lot so, changing. Yeah, I mean, when Bob did a drive by and he said it really wasn't that bad. Like I said, mostly, uh, you know, the only violation that. Um, he and Dick seem to have found is that there's, you know, two more unregistered cars that are allowed. Um, so, but obviously the neighbor is uh, not happy. Yeah, well, we may have to reach out, um, talk to the Board of Health. I'll be around tomorrow, uh, Amy, um, get their input but we may have to reach out to see if we can get a site visit because we want to see i'm looking at this picture you know you can kind of see where it's cleared off there's a bunch of stuff stored there just underneath your cursor so kind of between there and over to where that hydric wet soil is that's probably if that was 170 feet it's probably close to that 100 100 feet there's standing water there, and here's uh, yeah, like 100, 100 foot, yeah. So we may have activity that's in just to the south of there, Mark. It's dark again. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, I, you... I um, you know, Board of Health, you, you have both um, Alex and Dick, and you know, I recommend Dick certainly knows the history, so. Uh, yeah, uh, might need a site visit, and then if it's if we think it's close, we may have to ask them to um, perform a delineation and really find out and and get the uh, get the numbers in place. Because just look at this, uh, this is good. Uh, this is helpful. I want to stop share screen here. Yeah. If you go back in time, there's significant change from when it was owned by someone else in 2008. <laughs> to yeah. 
to now. A lot of things moving around. Well, here's 2001. Yeah, it looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Ag field. Yeah. But it doesn't look like in that picture, anyways, that the the wetlands the, the wetlands may have increased to the to the western side. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's a it's you know you see it in the spring and the fall it's it's standing water i mean it's a good little swampy area yeah okay well i think that's the next step then i will amy try to get uh, a little bit more information from board of health uh, tomorrow i can stop in the office if need be to see what they got but then we may have to reach out to the property owner to um request a site visit so we can go get an idea, walk the land, try to get a, you know, a sense of where some of the material is versus where we think, you know, a wetlands area could be looking at vegetation, soils, et cetera. But, um, and if it's close, then we may have to ask them for a delineation to see where we're at. Those would be, I guess I'm, I must be feeling really diplomatic tonight. I'm stepping through everything very, uh, <laughs> very nicely here must have been my vacation i'm in a good mood or something um i want to stop sharing my screen yeah all right mark thank that was very helpful thank you that was really helpful yeah but how do i stop sharing the screen oh uh, I have um, a button. or can you just do it for me amy uh screen amy you options. should be able to do that yeah uh shoot Arisha Zoom request annotate exit full screen. Uh, let's try that. There we go. That worked. Yes? No? No. <laughs> Mark, if you oh. click up on the top, there should be a an option. Yeah, view uh, options. Stop sharing. And I'm not seeing an option to stop sharing Zoom ratio, fit to window, or cross remote control, annotate, stop remote support, side by side mode. I don't see all my buttons are gone. Uh, try moving your cursor down to the bottom or the top, and that your buttons should come back. How about where it says request remote control? I can't even see that. If you move move your cursor, uh, was it on the it top or bottom? It escaped a couple times. It might <laughs> just be you're, you're zoomed in too far. That's all. The share screen is along the bottom, almost dead center. Um, so yeah. if you go down below, you might. Oh, here we go. Ho okay, maybe I can. Who can oh, share? Oh, all participants. I'm going to say host only and see if that changes yeah. anything. There we yep. go. Okay, yeah. that did it. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I don't have experience yeah. with this. We just needed like a a twelve year old or a little teenager to tell the hell to do all this technology okay. stuff. You know, I always ask them, my kids, "What do I do with this?" In their thirties. All right, so we'll step through with that. So information only. I'll get back to you on that. We'll leave that one um, open, Amy. Um, the Atlas. Farm compost notice was another. Uh, is that in the packet? I don't think. I don't see I, that one. I don't think so. I, didn't I, see. I thought I put the email. Um, uh, yeah, it was a very brief email. It was a complaint about a compost pile that they said wasn't being turned dick uh drove out there and he said it's nothing it's basic farming and i guess the the complaint was that it was covering county road which i guess is an unused road at this point and dick was saying is you know in the woods um that was dick's take on it that it's just basic farming activity so um so he's going to reply with that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. he's going to reply for the town because I think that her the woman's request was for anybody to take a look at it and reply. So yeah. if he represents the town. Yeah, I will ask him to uh, get back to her. Okay. Um, 
the abutter that brought this email has brought several other emails in the past, um, notifying us, uh, asking us to take a look at things at, at the Atlas farm. Um, so. Yeah, I've heard that. Does occur. Uh, yeah. Yep. So like I said, I will, uh, I will um, email Dick and ask him to uh Okay. Reply or make, well, I'll make sure that it gets the complaint gets followed up. Yeah, if you do that, so close it out with um, Ms. Gray, that would be good. Yep. Um, good. That's a new business, old business, and this is a little bit old. And I apologize, guys. So this is in your your packet. This is on the um, Mill Village Road lots twenty nine and thirty uh, parcels. Um, property owners are the, are the gardeners uh, on those two parcels. And then, then right up on five and 10 is owned by um, Mass DOT. Um, so everybody's pretty familiar with that site over the years. Um, we had the gardeners on our call, I believe in November, we sent them a letter uh, in November outlining the summary of that discussion. Um, where they agreed to cease and desist with, well, they still have a cease and desist on that property right now. Uh, they agreed to pay for a delineation of the property. We want an updated delineation. We're also working with um, uh, Mass, Trans Mass DOT right now. We're close, Amy, but we still haven't got final um, approval to go onto their site so we can do a the lots 29 and 30 plus a DOT site uh, delineation in that area all at once. Um, and we agree to all that. And I don't have that letter right in front of me, but you'd help, you guys have had it, you know, from the previous meetings. Um, as you see in the packet, um, their attorney from Buckley Richardson, um, Kathleen uh, Bernardo uh, was a partner that responded. Um, and kind of took a point by point review of our letter. Um, and there's just a couple of things in there. And I haven't, we haven't been able to get back to this um, up until this point because I've been trying to, I've been, Amy knows, I've been reaching out to town administrator and town council for quite some time now to get um, specific language to respond on some of these uh, specific questions. Uh, but I did want to, since it's been a couple of months, review it with the commissioners tonight, let you know we're still working on it. Um, and we can take a little closer look as we go through. Um, so their attorney, um, first thing they uh, note is that they, the gardeners went ahead and hired um, a firm, um, Ward Smith, the wet, uh, Wendell Wetlands Services to flag the wetlands on their own. Um, this, our request to them in our letter, if you look it up, was that once we got their approval to do that, that we would provide, we would put out the RFP to uh, wetland specialists that we work with, um, allow them to take a look at that review. Um, but we would, it would be the town that would um, contract the, the, the delineation at, um, at the property owner's expense, which they agreed to. So they went out and and they had um, Window Wetland Services go ahead and do a delineation. You can see the flags out there. They've been up since the uh, end of the last year. So I think one of the things that i um, working through with council is to go back to them and say, we appreciate that. You had every right to do that. Um, but as we noted, we're, we're still going to want a, uh, a peer review delineation. So we're still going to have to go out and hire our own peer review review um, to assess that site. It's been assessed a number of times and get a lot of different opinions of what's out there. So, um, so that's the first area. Uh, they have agreed to forego any activity on the parcels until the delineation is complete. That was part of our, our orders. Um, they've agreed not to partake in any activity on the mass DOT parcel, uh, each really of the boundary. If you look at the fourth paragraph, I guess I could show this if you wanted to actually see it because uh, Mark, you may not have it. Um, oh, I can't share it. Amy, you, you disabled me as well. <laughs> Host disabled participant screen sharing. 
Are you there, Amy? No. Maybe she's getting out. Anyways, uh, it's in the packet, um, you know, Mark, for you to, um, yep. where'd we go? Amy, it looks like you're sharing your screen now. Yeah. You're also muted. Ah, technology challenge tonight. I'll continue. Uh, everybody, Mark, you don't have it, but I mean, the, the... I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I was muted. I didn't realize. Um, so I have all participants can share now. So I, I'm not sure uh, how that works. So you need to stop sharing your screen so Pete can share his. Who's sharing? Me? You are. Excuse me? Amy, you are. I am? Oh, yes. cripes. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not used to this. People so uh, approve. Or... Okay, I just got an, I just okay. approved Pete to start sharing his screen. Okay. So Pete, you should be able to share now. I approved you. Uh, um, oh, for crying out loud. I'm sorry. No, Let's now I can this. do your screen. So sorry. Um anyways. Let's just go through it because everybody's got it. But so the, the fourth paragraph here is um, this is really where I need legal counsel to um, to review. Um, if you go through that, they're not uh, admitting to any wrongdoing. They do not to agree to be responsible for any reclamation, which we've talked to them about. Um, they go back to more verbal communication that they had with the commissioners that were in place in 2016. Uh, we had a lengthy discussion uh, with the gardeners during that conversation with their attorney uh, several months ago. Um, so they, they finished off, they will abide by and respect the outcome of an, any updated wetland delineation. However, they should also be able to rely upon the experience and actions taken by the 2016 commissioners. Um, that's a real legal ease one to me. Um, having worked in contracts most of my life, so I'm waiting for council to get back to us on that. Um, Pete, do you want me to send that, a copy of that letter to Mark? Or actually, I, I would probably have to check with, I, I don't know. When it gets to the lawyers, I'm always careful about what I send to who. Yeah, let's let's try to work through it with, with uh, our council, and then I will bring okay. Okay. Mark in uh, on this one eventually. We'll all, we'll all be back on this one, I'm sure. Okay. Um, um so we we will put it we're, we're going to go out to an rfp you're going to have to let them know about that um they will get together with um with mr ward to review all the ones in questions collaborate and get it resolved um so anyways it's been, it's out there i'm trying to get some resolution to it i keep pounding on our folks to get that done and to date i'm not getting very far so just want to give you an update on that one Okay. Okay. Um, I just had two areas of general discussion. Um, the last time we talked, we were going through the final revisions to the, the kind of the town specific order of conditions. Um, Sean, you wanted one more further review of those revisions and we're gonna get back to us to see if we can kind of get those um, set in stone and ready to go or are you good with those now you're muted oh i apologize if i didn't get back i i think they're great i was looking at okay. them in re respect to mr avery uh tonight and thinking i pulled out five or six of them i was like these would be good <laughs> yeah so that's what it's meant i mean there's 80 or so some of them in there um we can pick and choose as it is. So I'll work with Amy uh, on that to get that finalized on the right letterhead and so forth and put in place. Um, I also did attend the last planning board meeting, which is uh, two Mondays ago, I believe. Um, just to let you know, it was mentioned on that call that we should expect um, an NOI for sunny days. 
um, sometime before our March meeting. And so, um, Mark, I'm not sure if you're aware, Sunny Days is a fairly large cannabis, oh, they call it a cannabis campus, is what they're calling it. Um, it's going to be both growth, retail, and a um, testing laboratory facility on the site. Um, it is in wetlands go. area. What's that? Where's that going to go? Right at the, before you cut down five and 10, um, you know where the Treehouse Brewery is? Yeah, yeah. And the vets right there to, on the west side, they own property south of the veterinarian hospital um, before. Oh, same um, side of the road? Yeah, on the west side. Okay. That's what um, the ANRAD and the ORAD was on. They they yeah. did they finished those up. So we did the ANRAD, ORAD on that last, finished that last year. Um, they're now in front of the planning board. Uh, they do have their engineering designs and so forth and um they're building on top of every little area that's not a wetland <laughs> as you go through there um so when the noi comes in we'll 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 start with that one so that'll be a busy one we also expect an noi from eagle brook for their dining hall uh their new dining uh hall up in that area and um I think those are the two larger ones that we're expecting. So just general discussions, just kind of give you a heads up on that. You're going to get peer review on the uh, cannabis one, especially on stormwater. We had peer review for the NRAD. Okay. Um, and right now, I believe since the stormwater in Deerfield goes out from the planning board. Unless believe... it comes before the commission. If it comes before the commission, you guys still do it. Yeah, it's, so I think what's happening in this one, Mark, maybe get me corrected here, but I think we decided between the planning board and the conservation commission to put out one request for peer okay. review to cover stormwater and delineation and, and engineering design. So it's all under one house. So it'll yeah. probably end up, you know, like more with more like a time bond or BHB or, you know, a, um, a larger outfit. Uh, yeah, what? I think they're probably going to go. I mean, I, I, because John Furman is doing it, I, I, Think he's already decided he wants to go with a Berkshire design. He likes working with them, and the um, request for a proposal included the site plan review, the stormwater, and an NOI, so that you have one person doing the whole thing, and you know can say you know not duplicate work. All right. So VHB is the consultant for the applicant. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that one's common, Mark. That'll be we'll 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 need assistance on that one because it's quite a site. Okay. And they are hell bent and getting going. <laughs> Everything's got to be done yesterday. <laughs> It'll be interesting with the. There was an article in the paper about it. Um, a cannabis store going in on the corner there where the sugar loaf shops were. Yeah, there's actually awfully two going close. in there. Yeah, awfully close. So yeah, sudden it's and I know that's wait, uh, Sunderland or Waitley. Yeah, it's Waitley, and they've it's actually yeah. given out two, two permits and one side of those two stores for retail. So yeah, there's so, a couple of big ones going in Greenfield, from what I understand too. So. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, Ember Ember Gardens pulled out. Um, they were going, and then you know Sunny Days's deal is that they are going to have a lab. Mm -hmm. which I think is that's that's their sort of their big thing is the growing in the lab so they're not that worried about other retail hmm. so yeah so a lot going on there but we'll we'll have some busy ones coming up and I mentioned treehouse so the last thing I had for kind of just general discussion I will get back to uh treehouse as we come into the spring um they still have their erosion control items in place um from the the paths they put in we had some issues there that we addressed with them um but there's also the other side of that and it's something that i want to use more often with some of these larger projects that are coming up through it but we they uh, they agreed to us when they put in that that extended walking path to uh put in signage educational signage in that area um that would be listed by both the Deerfield Conservation Commission and the 
and the treehouse, uh, we might be able to use that in any one of these larger ones that are coming. And I've got some great photos that I took when I was at some parks in, in the, on vacation in Florida uh, on how they did some of these really nice um, signage and so forth. So I don't want to let some of these guys off the hook. And they also want to keep in mind um, the pollinators. Uh, you know, we do have a new, I'm not sure if it's a bylaw in town, but it's a new uh, process in town where we want to push uh, pollinators out when, we, when we're looking at replantings and, and such. So I would like, as we continue to work through this year, to continue on this educational side of, of, of issues uh, as well. Um, also have, uh, I need to follow up with Amy, but uh, I got to follow up with, what's that town, not Wendell? Um, Leiden. Um, they're doing some things with um, not weed, uh, not weed removal stuff. And right. again, we have so much of that here in Deerfield. I'd love to be able to see if we could get other towns, um, somebody like, you know, Frock involved, some funding, different things so that we'd have an answer for um, all these individual homeowners that come to us that, that want to do something and maybe we could figure out some way we could do uh, provide more educational information or uh, a larger answer to them. So those are just some of the things on sort of on my to-do list. <laughs> is, um, Leiden, is Leiden just treating chemically? No, they're no. actually, they've worked with, um, I forget the the group, but they're, they're doing it more where they're taking it down physically and then uh, I think it was about six, three to six inches of bark mulch and then a impermeable layer on top of it. They get the heat up and they leave that there for about a year or so and then more bark mulch on top of that and then uh, come back to it. It might have been with the extension service, um, but they're doing it kind of with their own DPW and their own folks and so forth. They, they called it smothering. Yeah. So I don't know if it works or doesn't work, um, but it's a, it's, you know, it's a, another area that I want to pursue to see if it is an option for people to use yeah. um, versus trying to go out there with every stem in a syringe. <laughs> it's been tried before. Maybe this is a new and better method. Yeah. Um, I think but... UMass, one of the extension service guys was working on it. So I don't know, but yeah. just to find out what people yep. are doing and if i can bring somebody like frock into it you know from a regional standpoint of the governments you know we're not the only town dealing with this stuff yeah um there should be municipal vulnerability um mvp grant monies that we could tap into as well for not weed control um because it, you know, represents issues with erosion control um, along our streams. So I, I would think the MVP um, municipal vulnerability um, would would also be an avenue for funding. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. So, but yeah. Okay. Um, getting a little long tonight, so we'll just go through the mail. We had uh, several pieces of mail in. For um, this month, um, Eversource sent a notice uh, for their 2023 calendar year for the uh, energy right of way vegetation maintenance activities. Um, it's a, a planned and scheduled vegetation maintenance work, uh, work being conducted under the uh, WP MGL 131, Section 40, uh, provide for the following exemptions um, for them. Um, so they're just sending along this notification to the commission uh, of the work uh, with a contact for any additional information. So if, if the commissioners wanted to reach out to them or if we felt we needed to respond, that's the opportunity to do so. Um, Second letter was just a notice from the MACC on their annual environmental conference, uh, which if you guys should all be part of the uh, MACC. And if you are, you're probably getting daily emails like me. <laughs> um, so they're all out there. Um, 
but there are some virtual conferences and so forth. Um, I haven't looked at them and been away. Um, we do have to watch our spending through the rest of this year till we get to the new fiscal year. Um, we were, <laughs> I had to put in uh, for additional funds to carry us through this year. And I've uh, asked for a doubling of the budget next year. So I haven't heard back from either one of those. So we'll see. Um, but if there are some of these, sometimes during their their annual conferences or other times that do some specials, which are very inexpensive or, or even um, fairly straightforward um, with no price. So just make sure you guys are aware. And if you, if you need to jump in on some of these things. Hello. So can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, I got you, Kate. Can you hear me? Maybe the meeting is over. I um I did note in the MACC letter that uh, if Kate wanted to, I'm not sure if I have an interest, but we both would qualify for a scholarship for being under a year, and they give out twenty. Uh, those scholarships. So you just would have to email Michelle Gerard. it looks like, if you might be able to go to the conference and do some of the fundamentals uh, for free. So. I've lost sound too. I can hear you, Sean. Yeah, I can hear you. I could. Okay. But I couldn't hear Pete. That was weird. I, I still can't hear Pete. Pete. <laughs> uh, motion to lips. adjourn. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me mute, unmute. He's not muted. Me, uh, Pete, check your, um. could it be your headphone? No. Oh, oh, there we go. There you are. There you go. Now we have you. That's good. Quick, well, finish up, Pete. Yeah, it just started heavy sleeting. Maybe that was it. Okay. Uh, we did get a notice from Eagle Brook on their Whipple Pond um, order of condition, uh, DP order of conditions on a mandated report for pond management. Um, so it's just an update of what they completed in 2022. Um, and there was some, I believe, yeah, there was a chemical ap applications and maybe some additional activity, but it was just the updates um, um, for that project just to follow their order of conditions to report. And then we had a mailing from the Mass Woods update. Um, this is again for an application for project training the intensive three-day retreat style training, forest ecology, stewardship, wildlife management, and land protection. So it's forest ecology. I think, Sean, you should probably get up to date on that stuff. So you may want to attend. I actually would like to attend, but I have. <laughs> I don't think I could face, uh, I have his position, Pete, uh, uh, Paul Catanzaro's. Uh, his old district is my district. So uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell him I'd like to attend his Keystone training. <laughs> Very good. Um, items unanticipated 48 hours to posting. We did have one that just came in this afternoon, uh, 340 Greenfield Road. Um, it looks like, I, I haven't even had a chance to look it up. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like someone may be interested in a, a purchase there. Um, there it's, um, apparently there's a crossing of a brook. Um, there was an NOI filed from 2007 um the, the 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 commissioners then did say that there was some conditions there um but they weren't marked it wasn't marked off on the plans and they weren't uh, they weren't continued uh they did note that was uh, valid for three years um not specified so uh 2007 noi is uh, was only valid three years so it's not there uh, it appears to be a driveway uh, over riverfront area, um, but nothing on the um, NOI was really marked off that uh, that I saw this afternoon. Um, is anybody on? Is that? 
I probably kept these people on all yeah, night listening think, to um, us, and they're finally getting into it, and they're like, "What's yeah, what's going on here?" Go, yeah. Is it uh, Dana? <laughs> there we go. And How you doing, Mike? Catch. I sent you the email. Okay. Hi, Mike. Nice to meet you. Good evening. Um, Thank you for the time. Yeah. If um, I'm not sure just what we can do for you right now, you might be just looking for some background. I can't do anything with a old NOI. Um, oh, it was for a three-year three-year period. I did see there was some pretty extensive um, engineering designs uh, with that. Um, there was some definite uh, wetlands area while you're going over the brook, so that, you know, there's a waterfront area. Um, there was some sloping in that area coming where the um, driveway was going to go up through. Um, and I think I might have even saw some uh, areas of reclamation of wetlands uh, that were outlined. I, I may be wrong on that. So okay. somebody did a fairly extensive jo uh, job with it, but I'm afraid we may have to um, kind of start over with that and take sure. a closer look. Yeah, we've done a lot of research, um, looking through some of the documentation that you already discussed. Um, I had a nice conversation with uh, Mike McHugh this afternoon from the DEP. Who, uh, nice to see Mr. Stinson on the call today as well, because he referenced him as a possible resource. Um, Basically, what we're looking to do is build a single family home, you know, get a small family farm where I live now. I'm looking to move to town and, you know, put our roots down there. Um, we ran into this and basically we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we buy a piece of property that we couldn't live on and, and access because you can't otherwise access the property without the crossing. Um, we understand that we're going to have to you know, hire an environmental consultant and kind of go through all the hoops that were already initiated by the previous owner, but just you know, was one wasn't sure. Obviously, this wouldn't be an official decision from the board tonight. But is this something that would still be acceptable if we presented essentially the same documentation and went through the process? Or what would uh, um, what would you recommend for how we proceed and how we um what, how the board would want the roadmap to go here? Yeah, I really you know can't say whether it's going to be course. acceptable or not to to we kind of take a look at it. Now, where is three forty Greenfield Road? Um, uh, um, Where's that, Mike? Mark? Opposite the butterfly place. Yeah, it's on the opposite side of the road, maybe half three quarters of a mile up on the east side of five and ten. Yeah, I think okay. I put a yeah, I think I put a, a map and lot number in there because I as far as I know it that doesn't actually have an address. Yeah, so I, opposite have, to... I think on the assessors it would be parcel looks like maybe 103. And if you look at up on GIS 7.1 is the, the big bold number. Okay, yeah, so before you, if you're heading north before you cut head start heading down the hill. Yeah, it kind of bends to the left a little bit. Yeah, so it, almost where North Hill side goes up. Um, after that. After it going north, yeah, it's right in that, that area there. Okay, yeah. so there is a little, um, Mark, I don't know if you have the map up, but it probably is like an intermittent stream there. It's a perennial stream. Perennial stream. Is it a perennial? Okay. Yeah. It's, it flows through there. That Okay, good. All right. Um, does that then feed into the Bloody Brook? Oh, the swamp. Oh, it goes down to the swamp? Yeah, it goes across the street into Fuller Swamp. Oh, it does. Oh. Yep. Okay. Got it. Okay. So it goes the opposite of what I was thinking. Oh, good. Okay. 20 acre parcel or so. Yes, sir. And most of it's uh, forested. There's some old agricultural fields there. Yeah, it looked like somebody had harvested corn off it this fall, um, or at some point anyway. I don't know when it was, but there were some cut stalks out in the field. Um, probably four to five acres cleared, and the rest of it upland and forest up to the yeah. train tracks. Okay. Do you have any of your uh, building plans thought through yet, or is that still? Uh, nothing far down there. Yeah. Our diligence, like we're um, very interested in purchasing the property, but like I said, if if rules and regulations had changed, looks like um, most of this was filed in 2007, and then it was reported. It looks like in the Franklin County uh, records in 09. Um, we weren't sure if any rules or regulations had changed in that intervening time that maybe would make this one go. There is a perk test. Um, so, like I said, just wanted to make sure that we weren't going down a road to buy 20 acres of land that we can just look at. Okay. And Mark, did you say there was changes or were oh, the main thing is the stream crossing standards have changed. Okay. So, so I mean, that's going to be the most expensive part of the project is getting across the stream. Absolutely. 
Um, do you have something that you could reference or something I could look into, or maybe I could call you tomorrow? We could discuss that a little bit more. Oh, you're going to need a consultant to design that crossing for you. I have no idea okay. what was proposed. I mean, you yeah, may be right. able to use it if it complies with the current standards, but I have no idea. DEP, sure. we have no records on the project. It's, okay, you know, there is a number I could give you if that was helpful or not. For? Uh, there's a DEP file number. No, I already saw, I saw oh, okay. the file number already. Okay. It's, yeah. Uh, we have gone through a few of the, well, the stream crossings over the last several years, and there's difference in culverts and sizings and, and oh, yeah. spaces and on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would agree with Mark. We're going to have to, you know, see the engineering, what you what you want to do, what you what is going to be, and then it would be the submittal of the NOI um, process. Um, mm -hmm. But we would, we would need all those. All those drawings, all the specs, um, the documents, so we could make some determination. We can't. We need the data to make determinations. Oh, so, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you know. ask you to make an uneducated, yeah. uninformed uh, yeah. determination. But basically, I yeah. guess to best summarize my question is: provided that it, you know, we um, we hired a wetland consultant and jumped through all the you know the necessary protocols for the NOI and got you folks out for a site visit and it was delineated. And it complied with the stream crossing standards that it, it would be a buildable lot. Is that a fair statement to make? If it complies with the regulations, it gets a permit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just from strictly yeah. from a conservation commission, uh, you know, wetland protection act kind of thing, then building inspector and everybody else comes okay. in with all the oh, other stuff. We have to involve yeah. other folks. You guys don't do yeah. bridges, and I, I get yeah. it. I yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, well, yeah, that'd be good, but that would be the process. Um, okay. You know, the the data, the engineering, the design, um, the forms, things that we can look at and um, absolutely kind of go over it in in detail. And um, once we get all of those, yeah, we'd probably want to do a site visit, take a look. Uh, absolutely. But we 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 would do all that, and yeah, I sorry to keep you waiting uh, for yeah, an hour and a half tonight. We could have done it earlier and, and been hey, done with it, but. Well. I'd rather yeah. hang out with you guys for a little bit of time than, you know, buy a piece of land that I can't do anything with or, you know, have an idea. So <laughs> I appreciate everybody's time and especially taking us as a late addition to the meeting. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. One, one question though. Before yes, sir. You go. When was this part of a subdivided land? Was this parcel subdivided in the past from other fields there? Do you know? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I just see that there were some maybe changes looking at some of the maps and some of the deeds and other things that, you know, there's a different parcel, like a parcel one, a parcel two, as you look up closer to the road, just north of where this parcel um, comes into Greenfield Road. Um, so I don't know if there was some trading for frontage back in the day or it was broken off from other pieces, but there's some, some odd shapes and geometry and some other things there, so. Well, that's that's important. You got to find out whether or not the lot was recorded at the registry before or after 1996. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, what was the size of the, the lot you said, Mark? I missed that. Twenty point two seven acres, according to GIS. Twenty. Okay. Yeah, because there's a there's a big chunk. Of, okay. All right. Well, good. Okay. Any, well, I think anything else that we can help you with? Okay. That is all I have. Hopefully, I get to talk to you folks at some point soon. Yeah, well, should still be here for a while. So okay. let us know. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Have a great. You too. Hey. Um, commissioners, anything else for this evening that anybody wanted to bring up? kind of covered a hodgepodge of different smaller things. I think next month we'll kind of be getting into a few more details, some actual projects to take a look at. Um, um, but we are going to have to follow up on this uh, clock crossroad tree clearing, uh, 72 Mill Village Road. Um, and then Mill Village Road, lots 29 and 30. I'm hoping we can get those uh, reconciled over before the next meeting as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's, um, 
Getting busy again. Mark, we have a busy town out here in South Deerfield these days. Well, but, you know, just ask for more, ask for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. 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 I did in the budget, but I don't think I get any of that. <laughs> well, if, if the meet, next meeting is on the 23rd and they get me the notice of intent in the next couple of weeks on that uh, marijuana place, I should have a file number for you, no problem. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly what their timing is, but they're pretty good about knowing the dates and the time of when things have to get in to get things done. They've been pretty, um, pretty on top of things on that. So um, that'd be a good help because that one's going to be, uh, took a while to get through the NRAD and the all right on that. So this is the next phase. Well, you guys understand how important hand rats are now. <laughs> yeah, that was a yeah. that was new to many of us, so it was uh it was good. All right. So anything I can do, Amy, you know, just let me know and I'll be glad to help any way I can. Oh yeah. You get I, those latitude and longitudes for uh that logging site now I can plot them for you pretty easy. Yeah, we'll try to uh, push that along. I said I'm being very nice tonight, just taking these guys step by step and seeing what we can do. <laughs> Maybe right, by next month folks. I might be a little more ornery. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, really, you were a softy, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, the next uh, upcoming meeting is March 23rd, uh, 7 p.m. We we'll get the notices out for that. If there's nothing else, we'll take a motion to adjourn to, uh, for tonight. I would like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting at 8.34. I'll second that motion. All right. The motion has been made and seconded. We'll take a quick roll call vote to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law. I'm not going to, I'll say aye. I'm not <laughs> <gonna come back. laughs> okay, so meeting adjourned. We're done. <laughs>